Welcome to another American Bankruptcy Institute podcast. I'm Sam Giordano, ABI Executive Director. Today we're going to talk about our most important law reform initiative since the final report of the Commission to Study the Reform of Chapter 11, released in 2014, namely the ABI's new Commission on Consumer Bankruptcy. Our guest is the official reporter for the Commission, Professor Robert Lawless. He's the Max L. Rowe Professor of Law and co-director of the Program on Law, Behavior, and Social Science at the University of Illinois College of Law. One of the nation's leading bankruptcy scholars, Bob is a co-author for the eighth edition of Secure Transactions, a Systems Approach, and the co-author of Empirical Methods in Law, a textbook on empirical methodologies as applied to the study of law. Professor Lawless is an active blogger on the popular Credit Slips blog, a discussion of credit, finance, and bankruptcy. He also participates in the Consumer Bankruptcy Project, a long-term research project studying those who file for personal bankruptcy. Professor Lawless is a member of the American Law Institute, the National Bankruptcy Conference, and a fellow in the American College of Bankruptcy. So welcome, Bob, to ABI Podcasts. Well, thank you, Sam. Thank you for inviting me to do this. So let's start at a very uh, 20, 30,000 foot level um, and ask why study consumer bankruptcy uh, and why now in particular? After all, uh, you know better than most that personal bankruptcy filings have been flat for years. What's the big deal now? Well, I'm sure they've been flat for years, but still this year there'll be a million people um, there's about 700, 750,000 cases, but many of those are joint cases. So there's about a million people who will go through the bankruptcy system. It's the part of the federal court system uh, an everyday person is most likely to have contact with and has great effect on people's lives. And in many ways, it's one of our uh, nation's largest kind of social services systems, right, to provide people with debt relief who are in over their heads financially. Uh, and the law that we're dealing with was passed, as I think probably everyone who listens to the podcast knows, in 1978. And by the time the report is released, the law will be uh, 40 years old. It, of course, it was substantially revised in 2005, but even then, will have been uh, 13 years will have passed. And the rate of change in um, lending practices, the rate of change in, in debt collection practices, means that a lot of the provisions in that law are simply showing just not uh, addressing the problems that are arising in 2017. Right. We do bankruptcy reform in uh, increments of 40 years, years ending in eight. Yes, right? exactly. So uh, 1898, 1938, 1978, so 2018. We can only, we can only hope, <laughs> yes. So who's on the commission? How is it structured? So the commission itself is uh, composed of uh, 17 uh, persons, two of them are the co-chairs, uh, uh, Judge uh, Bill Brown and Judge Elizabeth Paris are co-chairing the commission, and the other 15 commissioners are uh, broadly representative of the consumer bankruptcy attorney, or a community, consumer bankruptcy community, excuse me. Uh, we have people who represent debtors, both in uh, large debtor practices and in smaller debtor practices. We have people who represent creditors, both in-house. Uh, and uh, at outside law firms, we have uh, people who work for uh, legal services organizations. Uh, we uh, even have people who are involved on the governmental side of collecting governmental debts in bankruptcy. In addition to the uh, commissioners themselves, there are some ex officio commissioners, the presidents of the ABI are ex officio. There's a representative of the United States Trustee's Office as well as a representative of the Internal Revenue Service. And so that's the commission itself. And uh, underneath the commission, the structure of the commission is that uh, there are three advisory committees that uh, are doing in many ways the the groundwork for the uh, commission. Uh, There's uh, three committees. There's uh, the what we call the chapter three and five committee, the case administration and the estate committee, which are dealing with more general issues related to consumer bankruptcy. And then we have a committee on chapter seven and a committee on chapter 13 that are obviously dealing with issues that are more specific to those two chapters. And so on each of those committees, there are 15 people. Uh, Five of those people are um, persons who are commissioners already. And then there are 10 other people 
um, again, broadly representative of the consumer bankruptcy uh, community and all sorts of uh, all sorts of practices. Right. So I gather that was important to the commission to have a structure that emphasized uh, balance, and so it's not dominated by any particular uh, point of view. Well, that's yeah, absolutely right. When when the commission was uh, was organized, it 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 was only going to be successful if it represented a broad segment of the consumer bankruptcy community. And that wasn't going to happen if you only had people from one type of practice, whatever side of the courtroom that might have been. So uh, uh, myself and um, the others who helped organize the commission were very conscious of trying to get people who were, uh, you know, again, broadly representative of all different types of practices. But also something I haven't mentioned is also we were trying to be very geographic representative and and the people on the commission and the committees are from all over the United States. Hmm. And the uh, idea of a committee structure and the three that were chosen, what was the thinking behind that? The thinking was to try to divide up the tasks as well as kind of spread the decision making, right? So the whole structure of the commission has been designed to try to produce consensus and compromise and try to reach centrist positions, try to reach positions that we think on which there'll be broad agreement. So we've tried to divide up the uh, uh, kind of decision-making process, if you will. So the committees are kind of the front line. They, they uh, generated topics, they're studying the topics, and they will generate um, recommendations on those topics that then will go to the uh, full commission, which will then review those recommendations and will ultimately have the final say as to whether the recommendations are um, adopted. So the structure is set up in a way that uh, the authority is is divided. The committees have the power to set the agenda and are developing the initial proposals, but at the same time, they're not the final say. There's an overall commission that is reviewing everything and taking the big picture into account and coming up with, with a final report. And as I said, the, the intent was to try to develop a structure that pushed things toward consensus and middle ground rather than proposals that might be out on kind of one extreme. Right. And are the committees operating from a set of issues or questions for study? Yes, but those those issues were generated by the committees themselves, right? Mm-hmm. So the committees themselves, and, and, and remember the committees themselves are also composed, all the commissioners are sprinkled through the committees. So the committees themselves generated the topics. Um, the only kind of central planning that happened was that we uh, allocated the topics among the committees so we didn't have duplication of work. Um, but the committees themselves, as I say, set the agenda, and there's a, so there's a list of topics. Uh, we divided those up in the committees as, as best we could to the, according to the subject matter of the committees. And if people are interested, they can go to the commission website. Um, at uh, The address is... Uh consumercommission.abi.org. Right, right. Uh, but anyway, on that website, there's a list of all the topics. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, anyone who's interested can see it. So how is, the, how is the commission doing its work? How is it gathering information from professionals all over the country who work in the field? So uh, first of all, uh, anyone who wants to submit a comment, anyone, um, whether they're a bankruptcy lawyer or uh, have had contact with the bankruptcy system, anyone can submit a comment to the commission through our public email address, which is consumercommission at at abiworld.org. That is also linked on the website. Uh, The commission and its committees are also having public meetings where anyone can come and uh, make a a public statement. Um, These meetings have been happening at different professional events. the National Association of Consumer Bankruptcy Attorneys, the National Association of Consumer, or excuse me, National Association of Chapter 13 Trustees, the National Association of Bankruptcy Trustees, and the National Conference of Bankruptcy Judges, as well as ABI meetings. Um, all of these meetings are public. Uh, are, we're having public meetings at um, for the different committees. Again, information about how to participate is on the ABI website. Uh, we have an upcoming meeting. Uh, at the NABT in New Orleans in September, and we would welcome people to uh, uh, request a time to come and uh, speak to us when we're uh, at NABT as well as at NCBJ in uh, Las Vegas in October. And to do that, simply send an email to the Consumer Commission at abiworld.org, and uh, we'll do our best to accommodate as many of those requests as we can. 
So as as the reporter, you've been at all of these um, public meetings to date. Can you get a sense of how the uh, process has been received by the bankruptcy community? It's uh, been uh, it, it's beyond the expectations I had. I, I've been very flattered and uh, very uh, gratified to see uh, the amount of uh, participation there's been. Uh, we have uh, over 75 written comments we've received so far. Um, we have, when I went to the uh, NACTT meeting, the public meeting, uh, the, the room was packed. I'd estimate there were several hundred people in the room. Uh, at NACBA, similarly, we had a, a very crowded room. Um, uh, seems to be lots of interest, not only in uh, giving a public statement, but as well as coming to hear what people have to say. And uh, for people listening to the podcast or coming to NABT or NCBJ or the ABI Winter Leadership Conference, where we're having public meetings, please come and uh, please come and watch, or even better yet, make a public statement. Yeah, agreed. So. Uh, let me ask you a candid question. Uh, you know, we've both uh, been around a, a long time in this uh, community. Um, a lot of studies, uh, academic or, or non-academic, start with a premise or are calculated to validate a particular view. Does the commission have an agenda? Is that the case here? Uh, not at all. So, as I said, the commission and its committees are made up of people from uh, – widely varying parts of the bankruptcy community. Um, uh, indeed, the challenge is going to be is to uh, get these uh, uh, groups with people who come from widely different backgrounds and widely different experiences uh, to agree in, on um, the outcomes, that they agree on a set of recommendations. Uh, there's no preset agenda whatsoever. Um, I've heard uh, in s internal deliberations widely varying viewpoints on what the appropriate resolution uh, is of different topics. And um, as of we talking, um, as of right now, nothing's been decided. Uh, again, I guess I, I'm starting to sound like a broken record, but if people want to uh, weigh in, now is the time to do it and send an email to that um, email address. And uh, <clears throat> those comments get distributed to the people involved on the topic, uh, whatever the topic is that the email addresses, and will get taken into account. So, um, uh, Nothing's nothing's preset, nothing's preordained, um, and that's going to be the real challenge uh, for the next uh, approximately year and a half, which is to take these uh, uh, widely, again, widely disparate views and to try to forge some compromise around uh, recommendations that people can agree on. All right. So taking uh, the long view, and uh, I say this as uh, someone who's lived in the cynical environment of Washington for 40 years. Um, everyone uh, knows that the current Congress uh, likely isn't capable of passing anything of consequence, especially in the area of bankruptcy form, uh, bankruptcy reform. So my question is, given that environment, can law reform happen by means other than legislative enactment? Well, I think there are two answers to that, and, and the, the first answer is that, that the commission is focusing not just on legislative changes, but also changes that can be implemented in, in other ways. So uh, we're looking at uh, things that might be able to be implemented through court rules, whether at the national level or through local court rules. Uh, we're looking even at things that might just be a list of best practices. Uh, so some of the issues might just involve uh, best practices within a, within a uh, law office or within a, a court system. Um, so the commission is, it, it, the charge, actually the commission's charge it received from the ABI directors was to not only consider legislative changes, but to think broadly about law reform and just ways to make the system better. But the second part of the answer is that we're also not shying away where statutory changes are necessary. Um, I think one of the, the key to successful law reform is to recognize that even if the political moment isn't right at the moment the law reform is proposed, uh, there will be a political moment down the road where the reform might become possible and the ideas have to be on the shelf ready to use. And so um, I think uh, uh, to the extent that this commission proposes legislative changes and sure, right, maybe the political climate in Washington isn't that amenable to those right now. 
but to the extent that we do propose legislative changes, having those on the shelf ready to be used when the political moment is right will be very important. Right. I think that's an important point to emphasize in terms of this is a marathon, uh, not not a sprint. The 1978 bankruptcy code uh, grew out of um, a another commission, the one created by Congress in 1970, um, and and their report was issued in 1973. So it took years uh, before anything um, came to fruition from from that process. But it's important to be ready. Um, when the when the time and circumstances are um, amenable to it. Just look at the ABI's, the Chapter 11 Commission report, which has been very successful, right? It's still being used. Uh, those uh, those ideas are there. It's it's getting cited in court opinions. It's getting it's it's getting used. And, right. and I think the idea that law reform means that there's a report issued on a Friday and on Monday there's right. a bill in Congress moving through, that, that's that's ridiculous. Like you say, it's a marathon and I, I you know, I think the, the the Chapter eleven commission model shows that, right? That right. that you, you put those ideas out there and they're going to continue to get cited and used and over time uh, you're gonna see the, the change come out uh, that you want from the report. Right. It's an exercise in thought leadership we hope and that's um, uh, that will stand the, the test of, of time. And when the time is right, um, those ideas and suggestions will be available. What's the, what's the timeline, Bob, for the commission to do its work, say, for the balance of, of this year? Sure, right. So right now the committees are still hard at work. Um, uh, they're working on the different topics that are assigned to them and are just the, the kind of initial uh, reports are beginning to be circulated. Uh, the plan is that the committees will complete their work by uh, early 2018, hopefully by the end of January 2018. Uh, and then the work of the commission will really kick in, the full commission, and the commission will take the committee work and begin um, uh, trying to, to put together a comprehensive report um, and that'll happen in the spring and summer of 2018, and, and the goal is to have a final report published in time for the ABI's Winter Leadership Conference at the end of 2018. Ambitious. Make sure you're in good health. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good health and health and clear. Yeah, next summer will be a busy summer for me. Next summer. We know from experience that the reporter's task is just extraordinarily um, important. Organizing and keeping uh, keeping the group um, on track. Uh, but um, in my opinion, there are few as qualified to take on this project uh, such as you. So we wish you success in the study for you and your colleagues. That's way too kind of you to say. I, I was very, very flattered to be asked to, to take on the reporter role for this project and, and very proud to be doing it. And uh, it's just been a great experience so far, and I've uh, been working with, uh, you know, as I mentioned, Bill Brown and Liz Paris, who are the co-chairs of the commission. Um, but I also should mention Gene Weedoff, who's, of course, president right now of the American Bankruptcy Institute and has been uh, playing a key leadership role with the commission. It, um, uh, the commission wouldn't have happened without um, Judge Weedoff's uh, leadership. Uh, it's, uh, I know, an important part of his presidency of the ABI and um, I uh, was uh, having known Judge Weedoff for many years, being uh, just downstate from him. I uh, was, again, just very flattered to be asked to be part of his, uh, his uh, uh, commission. Agreed. Yeah, Judge Weedoff's one of five, I guess, retired judges who are on the uh, commission or involved with the commission from the co-chairs on. Uh, so it, it, it's very, it's a very experienced group. I haven't done the collective uh, years of practice, I'm afraid to, but it's uh, it is a very experienced uh, and balanced group, as you as you mentioned. Um, you mentioned also that it's an open process. You can't emphasize that enough, um, and that there are ways for the public to participate um, uh, by going to the website. Again, it's uh, consumercommission.abi.org. You'll find the list of topics, the committee lists, the um, a schedule of upcoming meetings, ways to participate, uh, even if you cannot participate in person uh, by way of written statements uh, and the like. And we uh, we can't encourage people enough uh, to uh, take part in the process. Well, that's all the time we have uh, for today. But I want to thank you, Bob, for joining us. Um, and um, also to remind our listeners that there are more than 200 podcasts for you to 
listen to or download uh, in our newsroom section. That's abi.org slash newsroom slash podcast. Thanks again, Bob. Yeah, well, thank you again for asking me to do this, and thank you very much for the ABI for supporting this important commission. Our pleasure. So until next time for the American Bankruptcy Institute, this is Sam Giordano saying good day. 